Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. For Tuesday, September 20th, 2022, there is not very much to be adding to our current analysis. Uh, the markets were a little bit on the quiet side. They had some decent moves today, uh, but it was on the slow side and they were limited and it didn't just move, move, move and then come back. But as buyers and sellers kind of moved in and took care of business, um, but we stayed within a range. Now, what the market did overnight is again went up and tested. Let me just kind of see if I can open this up just a tad. And go up a little bit. Come see if it'll do it for me. There we go. Um, it went up at during as Europe was opening. So at midnight here in California, 3 a.m. on the East Coast. And basically put in a slight new high. But if I take a look at the line chart, which is on a closing basis, right? So I want to see what actually was going on. And the high that we saw um, yesterday at the beginning of Globex uh, was the one that stayed in place. So when I'm trying to just take a look as to what actually is, is going on there and what is the market trying to tell us, I still believe that this is likely the completion point for wave minor wave one. And then we have an A. And then we have a B, even though the B slightly went down and made a new low. So it's kind of strange, but we may have a B and now we're still going to do a C all before the Fed makes their announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern. Now, if not, then we're going to be looking that this level up here completed that small minor two. And that we're now beginning to drop. But again, wave three doesn't just start with a little walk in the park and then go up and then die. It could, but that's not that's not how I see it. So I believe that we still have a little bit more upside to do to finish out this particular sideways move. A failure is also a possibility. But no matter what, I don't think we're just going to fall off and drop into the abyss um, before the Fed. And it's actually even with the Fed announcement is not a guarantee that we're going to drop off into the abyss. But that's where we're going to be expecting some type of a reaction to what the Fed has to say, in particular, what uh, Fed Chair Powell will have to say during the press conference, which begins at 2.30 Eastern. So first we get what they're doing, what action they're taking, and then we get to trade that for a half hour, and then comes the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of what <laughs> the board is thinking about. So in the meantime, I am still counting this as minor wave one. We're looking for a minor wave two. It could be here. It could come back in. It could come into failure all to be determined, but I am continuing to look for uh, an additional stronger uh, move down. Now, what we can also, I've taken a, a look at is this and this. They kind of resemble each other in moves. This was, I believe, yes, August 26th. This was the last time Powell spoke and it was from on the Jackson Hole speech. Boom, boom, and then we continue to go down and then we did go down to 38.83, and that was at the beginning of September. So now we're repeating this type of a wave, but it's bigger, because if this is one, we're now in three, but they seem to be kicking off pretty much the same. So a little bit here is here, and then we start to slide, then we start to slide, and then we do it a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, then we slide, and then we rally. But I'm looking for three to come in bigger, so the rally, I think, is going to be held off for whatever reason they're going to choose to rally. And again, we'll see, because I'm not looking for this big of a degree move yet until we have gotten all the way through intermediate wave three. 
So other people are telling me that they're, you know, they're not as bearish. I don't consider that bearish. I just consider it part of the pattern. And when I go out to, let's say, the weekly chart, it fits totally. Again, there's the target for the cycle wave A. What's inside of cycle wave A? Three waves of primary degree, labeled A, B, and we're in that C wave. C wave should be pretty large. Should we, C wave should be greater than the A wave, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that still remains the same. Regardless of what happens on tomorrow, I, I mean, pretty much it's accepted that the Fed is going to hike rates at least three quarters of, of a point or 75 basis points. That pretty much is a given. So in my own personal opinion, if they come in less, that's going to be a sign of weakness in the face of the reality that inflation is real. And it is now taking a chunk. And now we're getting reports from Ford that came out today and said that they're getting ready to take a billion dollar hit due to inflation because it's a billion, their costs have been gone up a billion dollars. That's a lot of money. And so now it's almost as if I could say it's like phase two. Phase one is how it's really hitting us as consumers because that we get it right away. Well, now producers are going to start coming out. So those producer prices that we just had, I think they're going to start to change because there's so many different parts to an electric car or a car or a truck or whatever that gets built. They, their costs have gone up and it's going down the line. So we're moving into what may turn into be like phase two of this whole inflation. Phase one, more consumer. Phase two, producer that they can't pass on because they, they, they have to pay first and then maybe pass it on to us. But what's that tell us? Are we going to be able to buy it, et cetera? So you can see how the chain of events may or may not really start to put a draw on because I think as, as we as investors, and we're just the little guy, start to really realize it's like, no, you can't keep holding this up. Ford is telling you right out to, straight out today, we're not going to make what you think because our cost just went up a billion dollars. And they've not been able to pass that on to the consumer yet, to the buyer of their products. So I'm sure there are going to be some price increases as well. Now, that's all down the road. If we look at what we're should be starting to do. Weekly chart continues to talk. I talk, it continues to show downside. The daily continues to indicate downside. And I've switched over to the Heiken Ashi so that we can see it's like these, these moves, this is a continuation. And now look, we're not really getting any continuation bars out of all this bouncing around rally that we've kind of been doing off these lows. Everything is continuing to point down, 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 down. So tomorrow I am looking for a, a continued small rally here, right? Like we're seeing on the hourly, a finishing up, maybe a failure. I'll figure out the count, but I am looking for it to turn and continue to move lower at some point. Now, where we have support, 38.43, 38.40. Now, for this, these larger are for the downside move. So they're still there. So now I'm going to go back to that hourly. So coming off, we have FIB support next up at 37.42. Now, yes, we're going to have some support at, I can do one more if we're ready to pick up. I didn't want to do it because I because we're still dealing with the upside but I am going to put that on now. So let me go back out to the four hour chart and open this up a little bit this way, guys. And because what I can put on here real quickly is here, but this would be, nope, sorry. Let me change that Go there. I'm looking on for intermediate wave three. Those larger ones are for the primary wave. Okay, <clears throat> so here we have this now. 
And we have next support at 38.36, which we're getting close to, got down to 43, I think, today. So, we, you know, this is right in the hood. But I think once that breaks, you see it started opens up a little bit. You don't have too much. We got a little bit at 38.16, and then it still opens up. So our next is actually where <laughs> this uh, 37, it's two places, 37.42 and 37.50, I'm going to say. So 37.50 down to 42 or 40. And that's going to be the 50%. And actually the internal, the internal um, <coughs> intermediate, <coughs> excuse me, wave three would be equal. But again, I'm looking for much more in this third wave. I am actually looking for the third wave to come down and break 36, 39 before it completes. So I'm looking down into here uh, for it. I mean, ultimately, 3604, 3600, and that's going to be intermediate wave three, then we get a four, and then we get a five. And that five, again, will bring us down much, much lower. We're looking at these lower. So the, the stronger that we can get out of, out of the intermediate wave three, so if we can put another in, once this two is over, I can add an additional layer of fibs for the minor period. So I can't put it in yet. So we see how we're going to keep structuring it down to find our support as we go down. So these levels will change. But initially, 36, 38, 36, 3,800, then it breaks pretty quick, but we should get down to that 3,750 area. That's why I would expect a pause. All right. So now upside again, initially, I think we stand a chance. I'm going to go back down to the hourly chart where we could run back up, test these levels. And they might do that overnight. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I think it's going to get slower as we get closer. But it depends on each how and what needs to be uh, adjusted as it moves across the different continents. All right, now over in the NASDAQ, it, tr it truly is basically the same picture. Um, the NASDAQ, again, did not make the, any new lows. So this whole sequence where we have new lows twice in the S&P, the NASDAQ has not participated in. And honestly, what's really been holding it up for, for a great part? Apple. They've ra rallied Apple from 150 up to 157 or something today. And right now, they're just going to let it hug right there and unchanged. That's keeping this alive. So here, it looks even cleaner. If this is minor one, and we're still working through the minor two, and this is A, and this is B, and now we're going to do a C wave. And that C wave does project, and, and, and we could get up to 2140, which is where the 200 is. So again... These are for the wave two. I've left them up there. And right now, a full-blown, if it's going to be a full-blown wave two, a minor wave two, then we're looking at 12,382 uh, 12, to 12,525. And for all I know, folks, is that's going to be the reaction to when an interest rate comes out? I do not know. I do not know. Again, I was going to say before, if it's like a half a point, then I think I think that we really it's going to show weakness from the Fed. If it's the full seventy five basis points, relief. Whew, we didn't come in higher, one percent or more. Then I think we'll really slide because it's it's an acknowledgement from the Fed that inflation is real and interest rates are going up, and we've been telling you it's going to be painful, and here you are, boom. But they're going to show their, it's going to give us more pain than, than what I think people were expecting. All right. So that is that. Now in the NASDAQ, we have these levels. A full-blown takes us up. I don't expect it. Not right now. So it would be a surprise to me. But I'll tell you what, it it, you know, the other thing that as a day trader we get to do, we trade the price action. So when they start to buy it, I'm not stuck in a short position. I can turn around and I can buy immediately and ride with what the what the prices are doing, what price action is doing, what the market is doing. I really don't care why they're doing it.
But if it's moving and it's got enough volume in it, you want to participate because that's how you're going to make your money. Same deal on the downside. I'm not calling either direction. I am saying based on what I'm hearing, based on what we all should know by now, what's being reported by the media and everybody else, to expect an interest rate hike, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But if they come out and buy it, it's going to be a shock to the system because everyone goes like, what's going on? But are you going to stand there and try to sell it to them? Or are you going to play along? Again, depending on the style that you trade. But for me, I'm staying totally open. And if it goes, I will want to participate because they will move it. And from where we are, 11,936, 27. If they jump on board and they take this thing up to 12,380, hello. I'd like to get a piece of that 400 points. We all would. Okay, so that being said, first thing first up, we have that still resistance to 12,065, I'm going to call it. We get above it, it fails. We got above it, it failed. They didn't even try to retest it. Above all that, we have the hourly 200 EMA at 12,140. The SMA is at 12,240. So 140 to 240, that's just going to be a hike being, if it breaks above the EMA, the 200 EMA, look for it to go to the SMA. And then we have FIB resistance at 240 as well. So we got a bunch of stuff going on. Once we, once we can get above 12,100 and get towards these levels, 12,140 might cap it, but stop it on a, on a dime and turn it the other direction or possibly a continued run. Now, downside, it's gonna be pretty much the same. I am going to take off that and go back out and let's re-enter for the larger. Uh, add a drawing and we're gonna put in these fibs and that's there to actually one and then three. Now, this is for intermediate wave three, which is underway. So next up in support on that level is, again, down here at, yeah, I can't barely read it, guys, 11,862, which we have been through, 11,704, which we have not challenged. We've gotten down there, but we've not challenged it. So that's really un untouched support. And then 11,557, and then it kind of opens up a little bit. We have some, if we go over here, some, some price at 11,370, price support, 60, 11,360 to 370, you know, to, uh, yeah, 360, both. Um, and then we drop to 11,167, and that's also in the hood. And that's where wave three would be equal to wave one. I'm looking for more than that. We already know that story. I'm actually looking for intermediate wave three to come down to 10,000, closer to 10,000 than up here. <clears throat> so I'd be looking for an additional bigger drop. And that could come over the next days, weeks. We'll see. And ultimately, ultimately, and that's on the daily. So if we take this back down to the hourly, what's it tell us? What's it give us? That we're sitting at, we've gone through today, we're back above. So that continues to, to supply along with 11,775, 74. That's where our lows have been. Then we have 700, 704 down to 700. Then it breaks. And then we have that larger break. So that's going to be the picture for today. Look out for tomorrow. Again, Fed results come out at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 o'clock here on the Pacific. And then we have Fed Chair Powell speaking at 2.30 Eastern, which is 11.30 Pacific. I suspect that the greater fireworks are going to depend on what Powell actually talks about, what any ground that, the, that, that they have gotten containment of this fire called inflation. And yep, well, we, people will want to hear that, and they will likely determine trades based on it. So good luck trading tomorrow. Have a great trading day. And our next update will be on Wednesday, September the 21st.